And that's where the first number comes in. The world has defined complete calamity as two degrees, two degrees Celsius rise in temperature. Now two degrees, the scientists tell us, is too much, okay? If one degree melts the Arctic, we don't want to find out what two degrees does. But <laughs> if the world officially believes anything about climate change, it's that two degrees is too much. It's the reddest of red lines. So that's the first number. Second number. 565 gigatons, 565 billion tons. That's how much the scientists tell us that we can pour into the atmosphere and have a realistic hope of staying below two degrees. Two degrees. Not a guarantee, only about an 80% chance, but that's the number. It comes from a paper in 2009 by a scientist named Meinhausen. It sounds like a lot, 565 billion tons, and it is a lot, but unfortunately we produce about 31 billion tons a year of CO2 as a planet, and that number is going up 3% a year, so that gives us about 15 years before we blow past that threshold, which is not good news. Okay? But the bad news, the really bad news, is the third number. That was the new one, and the one that prompted me to write that article, and really us to undertake this campaign. It comes from a team of financial analysts in the UK who set about figuring out how much carbon the world's fossil fuel companies had in their reserves if you added them all up. And that number turns out to be 2,795 gigatons, five times as much as the most conservative government on earth thinks would be safe to burn. It's not even close. Now, that coal and oil and gas is still physically below the ground, but economically it's above the ground. It's their share price that Exxon is based on when Peabody Coal borrows money, that's its collateral. It's going to be burned. There's no longer any room for speculation or wishful thinking or doubt. What those numbers mean is quite simple. This industry has announced that they're going to burn five times more fossil fuel than the planet's atmosphere can begin to absorb. Um, that's how much CO2 there was in the atmosphere before the Industrial Revolution, okay? That's how much we've added since. That caused the temperature to rise one degree. The red line, that's how much more we could add and stay below two degrees. The rest of that box, that's how much they're planning to burn, okay? These numbers show, and this is the thing I want to make clear, that the fossil fuel industry has become a rogue force. It would be very hard to change Exxon's mind. They're extremely powerful. The trouble is, it will be much harder to change physics' mind. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to use an analogy here, okay? And to help me get this analogy across, a few of our friends from 350 Maine, okay? Bob Klotz and William Heidi Ruder and Cable Cameron, Hillary Clark, Matt Goodrich. Thank you guys enormously. Here's the analogy. Let's think of that two degree rise in temperature. Let's think of it as like the, the, the legal drinking limit for drivers, okay? Um, it's not a good idea to go right up to 0.08. You're kind of impaired when you get there, but that's what we've agreed on, like the two degrees, okay? That's as far as you're supposed to go. And you can, you know, uh, 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 thank you very much. Um, um, uh, greetings. Uh, uh, someone my size maybe could drink four of these in the course of a long evening with plenty of food and whatever and still have some hope of staying below that two degrees. So that's like the 565 gigatons. That's what our limit is. The problem is the fossil fuel industry are party animals, okay? And they've got three cases open for us to drink tonight, me to drink tonight, okay? That's what the 2,795 gigatons is like. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. Now, some of you are in college, and, you know, it's possible that you know somebody on the rugby team who would be willing to attempt this, okay? But think about if they survived, how we would describe their condition, all right? And then think about the Earth. They would be wrecked, smashed, wasted, total, ripped, polluted, okay? In the case of the rugby player, the hangover would last 
four or five days. Uh, in the case of the planet, it lasts for geologic time. And here's the really sick thing. All this beer on the table now, far more than we could ever drink, and yet, and yet, they keep looking for more. Ah, Exxon spends, one company, a hundred million dollars a day looking for more gas and oil. Think for a second about what a hundred million dollars a day would do if they were building solar panels with it, okay? But, but a hundred million dollars a day. And to find new stuff, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. That's tar sands mining. That's mountaintop removal. That's... I sent Phil, my colleague, out to the package store to find out what the gnarliest bottom of the barrel stuff that they had was. And I could not resist showing you what the answer was. Keystone, that's what we get when we get to the very, So, uh, this being a family gathering, uh, there are certain obligations we have to dispatch. The very first is keeping in touch. So, this is not a movie, uh, we're not asking you to turn off your cell phones, we need you to take them out. This is how we keep in touch at 350.org, through email primarily. And this is how we make sure that we have your email. So, everybody take out your phone, imagine I'm doing the same, and text this message, the word plug in, one word, then your email, and then your zip code. So, and then text it to 50555. So if I were doing this, I would write, plug in, Duncan at 350.org, and then my zip code, because I live in New York City, is 11206. So type the word plug in, your email address, then your zip code, and then text it to 50555.